is about what our youth is and, and who we are today as, as a country, as a, as a universe. Congratulations, Reggie Jackson. You are CUBE alumni. Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Google Next 2017. Happening in San Francisco, we're shooting live from our 4,500 square foot here in Palo Alto on the heart of Silicon Angle. Happy to welcome back to the program, I guess we haven't had a little while, but uh, one that we know uh, quite well, Ron Bianchini, who's the CEO of Avir. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, so, so Ron, uh, for our audience, why don't, you, why don't you give us the update? What's happening uh, with Avir, uh, you know, the, the company itself, and, and what brings you guys, which I, I think of, you know, no offense, you guys are an infrastructure company. Uh, that's right. I, I think of on there, you know, how does cloud fit into the whole discussion you guys are having in your customers? That's great, great, great segue. So we started out as an infrastructure company, yeah. and really what Avir learned to do, our whole IP, actually let me start this way, we started in 2008. Think about where the world was in 2008. People were trying to figure out how to get flash into the data center. And what we did is we came up with a storage system, a NAS server, that knew about two types of storage. It knew that there was very high performance, nearby precious flash storage, but that big bulk storage, much cheaper, one-tenth the price disk, was a high latency away. And we were able to take that solution and we started out in the data center, we went after very high performance applications, but showed how you could do it at very low cost. Well, it, it's great, nine years later, I mean, storage is infinite and That's free, right? right? That's so, right, you know. That's right. <laughs> so the, the good news for us is, the world is very much in the same place. The cost delta between flash and disk has stayed at 10 to one. Both have gotten a lot less expensive, but that, that difference between the two has stayed. It turns out a solution that knows how to use local high performance flash and store big bulk data high latency away is an ideal solution for the cloud. And really what we're helping customers now is we're helping customers that are in the data center, in the enterprise data center, we're helping them adopt cloud. And, and it works two ways. We, we support the gateway model where you can keep your compute on-prem and put your big bulk storage in the cloud and we enable that model without seeing any delta in any change in performance or availability. But we also do the opposite of that. We enable customers to put their compute out in the cloud and now the big bulk capacity could either stay in the cloud or it could be on-prem. So really, I think, think about us as an enterprise data center play, just like you said, but now we're helping customers take baby steps and slowly adopt the cloud. All right, so you know, terms I heard from Google this week, uh, they, they talked about building the planetary scale computer. Uh, they talked about you know, Google Spanner, which uh, you know, gives us you know, global, uh, you, know, you know, the time synchronization across the globe. I mean, the things that you know, those of us you know, with storage background, you know, it's like, boy, these are you know, big, big challenges. Words. You big know, words, right. Talking about you know, some of the things, you know, the, just physics that we you try to figure all that. So how, how do you guys fit into that? I mean, doesn't you know, GFS, you know, Google's file system, you know, solve all these issues for us? Right, great. So one thing to understand is um, uh, that enterprise storage uses a very different consistency model than Google storage. So um, there's, a, there's a theorem called the CAP principle, C-A-P. It's consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. And basically what the CAP principle says is, of those three parameters, pick two, because it's impossible to build a storage system that does all three. And really, GFS is all about availability and partition tolerance, because they have big, scalable solutions. What it doesn't give you is exact consistency, and that's what NAS solutions do. So NAS solutions are really the high consistency, still partition tolerant, because you have big distributed scale systems, but you don't get that high availability piece. And, and it turns out in the enterprise, there are times when you need high availability storage. That's what you get from Google's file system. But then there are also times you need high consistency storage. That's what you get from an Avere solution. Imagine a bank account where you deposited a million dollars 
and then you withdraw a million dollars from two locations maybe 10 seconds apart if you don't have a high consistency model it might be possible to withdraw money from both places that's what NAS guarantees yeah Ron I, I want to get your your viewpoint I'm sure you, you talk to a lot of your customers what's their mindset of cloud today and you know what, what are the kind of kind of conversations that you know you're having when people stop by your booth uh, you know at Moscone West right so you I think you said it right Google is proposing big, scalable, huge features that, um, that, that the customers are trying to get access to, but moving everything from the data center into the cloud all at once to get them is a big, scary step. And so really what we enable people to do is to take baby steps. If you want to move a little bit of your capacity to the clouds or petabytes of storage in the clouds, like one of our genomics customers does, you could do that. Your compute and, and a lot of where they started in storage stays on-prem, but now they're leveraging the cloud for big, scalable capacity. Then we have other customers that want access to the compute and the performance, the scaling you can get. We allow them to get access to that as well. Yeah, uh, any commentary on it, you know, I think about just the, the, the trend itself. There, there's no doubt how big cloud is and right. how fast it's growing. When we look on the on the data side, uh, Diane Green threw out a number that only 5% of the world's data sits in the public cloud and that's going to shift. Um, you know, we know that there's a lot of, you know, compute heavy workloads uh, that, that really started out in those environments or leveraging that. So there, there's a lot of kind of reasons why we haven't had the data there. We are starting to see um, right. some, some rapid acceleration. What, what, what do you see happening in the environment? I think I think that's right. I think the five percent number just gives us a window into how big the, this cloud uh, movement is. How much is still left to be accomplished? We talk about cloud, 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 as if it's already happened, but we're only at the cusp of what's possible. And that's that's really what we see is this next big phase of the cloud is ingest, is cloud adoption. It's migrating applications and storage into the cloud. Yeah, well, we said what the, the future's already here. It's just unevenly distributed. That's right. You know, some it of hasn't us are quite made it yet. Uh, you know, you you're uh, I, I'm, you guys uh, you guys are headquartered in Pittsburgh. We are. You know, I'm out of Boston. Uh, we always joke. I always joke every time I come out here. It's like, okay, I'm going to go spend a week in the Valley and in San Francisco. Then I'm going to go back to the real world where you know I'm not seeing autonomous vehicles in front of me. Uh, and even though you guys have some uh, cool autonomous cars driving around we Pittsburgh absolutely these do. days, um, and you know, not everybody is fully cloud native. You know, serverless and everything else like that. Um, you know, what are you seeing in the marketplace? What's interesting you these days? Yeah, there's, a, there's no doubt that in the future world, all data, all applications, everything will be in the cloud, unless there's a very important reason to have it nearby, right? So you, it, we think with our genomics customers, it has to start where the patients are. It has to start on-prem, and then it gets migrated to the cloud. But there's no doubt in the future, all compute, especially the big scalable things that we hear Google talk about will be there. The next, you know, five, seven years is all about how we get there from here. All right, and Ron, as people look at your company, what should we be expecting kind of throughout the rest of this year uh, as, as we look at your growing your, your, your future? It's all about making it easier to adopt the cloud. You're going to see higher levels of integration with our cloud partners. Google in particular, um, we do a lot of work with Google. You're going to see big steps as we move forward to make that integration yeah, And you're working better. with the other cloud players. It's, we, you know, yes, this is a Google show, but you know, we, right. we want to talk about the, the environment. Lots of companies I talk to are like, look, you know, yes, Google's a player, but you know, I talk to plenty of companies that look, three quarters of my customers are all on Amazon, and that's where that's a lot right. of the market is today. So what, what's the breadth of the offering that you have today? It is. So so, so we support all the three big cloud players. We support Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and Google. Um, what I will say is the Google team is very much focused on the enterprise, just like Avira is. And that synergy helps us a lot. It's really helping us knock down customers and, and really helping get customers moved into the cloud. All right, well, Ron, I'll give you the final word uh, to, you know, takeaways for the week, uh, you know, anything else you want to share before we wrap? You know, it's exactly what you said, the, the cloud is coming. It's now, it's just a matter of how we get there and, and watching the big momentum shift. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, Eric Schmidt, uh, you know, sa said, you know, last year we we're like, kind of meet you where we are. He's like, uh, this year it's, 
come on, you know, it's right. now is the time we need to go. I think we understand, we understand how big, uh, you know, cloud is going to be, uh, it's, you know, one of the, the, the generational shifts uh, that we're all going to be watching and we're, we're in the thick of it. So thank you, Ron, uh, for joining us and we'll be back with lots more coverage here. Uh, we've got, you know, call-ins and people uh, at the show itself doing dial-ins, uh, pulling people in, uh, you know, really broad community uh, at this event. Uh, so stay tuned for lots more coverage and you're watching theCUBE.